I just cut out the pattern pieces for this Simplicity 9554 and I want to make this view here. Both of these views are view A. So you can see that the front is a little bit shorter than the back and I have the pattern pieces here. So I have them flipped upside down so that I can line up these side pieces here. So this is the center front. This is the center front and then these are the side seams. I did draw a line, the stitching line in. This is 5 8 of an inch away from the edge and I did that on both pieces. And then I am going to line up these pieces. I'm going to make sure the green lines are on top of one another. I want to have a curve here on the side. So let me show you on the pattern. Instead of it being like straight down here like this, I want my side to have just like a little curve right here. So what I'm going to do is make a mark about three inches up from here. And then I'm just going to draw in a curve. And then I'll cut that out. And then I will add seam allowance to the pattern. And then I'll just cut out my fabric and I'm going to be using this 100% cotton fabric from Joanne Fabrics. I use this curved ruler to kind of help me with this shaping here. So now I'm going to just go ahead and cut this out. And I'm also going to cut out a size medium. This pattern does come in an extra small which is what I would normally cut out, but I wanted an oversized shirt. So I'm just gonna go with a medium. This pattern is rated as average. It does have a collar and it has buttons down the front and then it also has pockets. This is how it's looking now on the sides and I'm going to add some seam allowance to this area. I guess I need to leave the weight there. And I'm just gonna use this paper that I like. I'll link it below if you're interested. And I'm just going to cut some of this and stick it in this area here and add 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to this area. I added the seam allowance so this is how the pattern is looking now. And then I just kept on going and I ended up just extending the hem here in this area also. So I did it on both sides. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make this a dress. So I am going to lengthen it. And then after that, I should be able to cut out my fabric and get started. Now this is how I am planning to lengthen the pattern because I don't see any lengthen and shorten lines. So I just put the front here and the back here and then I made sure that the necklines were even. And then I'm going to come down under the arm and decide where I want to draw this line and I'm making sure these are abutted, making sure they're touching. And then I'm just going to put my ruler on a line and then I'm gonna draw it across and then I will cut it. And that way I will be sure that I'm lengthening the pattern in the same area on the front and the back. And then once I cut it and separate it, then I'll add some paper between the two pieces to lengthen it the amount that I want, which for me, I'm going to do 14 inches. Okay, I'm almost done. I did extend the front piece. This is how it looks with the extra 14 inches included in the pattern. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the back piece. And then I can cut out my fabric. This pocket piece has a grain line that is on the bias. If you are making this in a striped fabric, then the bias cut will have your stripes going at a diagonal, which is a nice feature. Since I'm using a solid fabric with no stripes, I am just going to have my grain line go straight up and down. I don't have to worry about cutting out on the bias. I just finished working on the front facing area of the shirt dress. I have all this basted down. I've decided that I want to move the front pockets. Since I'm making a dress, I decided to just move the pockets down so they'll be lower. So I have them just temporarily placed here where they're going to go on the shirt dress. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start working on putting them together. This shirt has a little loop in the back. 
And I learned recently that in the 1960s, Ivy League students would wear shirts with loops on the back and the loops were called locker loops. And they were so that men could hang their shirts in their lockers to keep them wrinkle free when they were exercising. So later, the locker loops became a relationship status symbol. And what the men would do is they would remove the loops on the back of the shirt to show that they were taken or in a relationship. And then their girlfriend, what she would do in return is she would wear his scarf to show that she was in the relationship with him. And I also learned that some of the young ladies would yank the loops off of the shirts of the guys that they liked. Here's the loop and it's going to get basted to the top edge of the back. This pattern has directions for the burrito method and that's what I'm working on right now. And I wanted to mention that the yoke back piece number five was also supposed to be cut on the bias. And I just cut mine straight up and down and I used the center back as kind of like my grain line to make sure that the piece was straight on the fabric. And I do feel like I saved a little bit of fabric by not cutting this piece out on the bias. This is how everything is looking so far. I really like the way it's turning out. And let me show you the back with the little loop. Here it is right here if you can see that. So, yep, it's big but that's exactly how I wanted it to be. So I'm pretty much done. I have the collar on. I ended up doing a narrow hem around the armhole opening. Here is the side hem after the adjustment was made in the very beginning. And I also plan to put my buttons on the left front of the shirt instead of on the right as the pattern suggests. And then I'm going to use these wooden buttons. So the front of my dress will have 10 half inch size buttons and I found eight and I'm just looking through here trying to find two more that look like these over here. So that's what I'm up to and then once I sew the buttons on, there's one more, one more, one more but give me ten. Once I sew the buttons on then the dress will be all finished. There is a button at the very, very top of the dress. I think it's on the collar or very close to the collar. That is the only button that I won't be putting on, but I am going to put all the rest of the buttons down the front of the dress. another garment to share with you. I made Simplicity 9550 and I made the shorts. I made these before in a rayon fabric and this time I decided to make it in a cotton denim. These shorts have gathers in the waist area and an invisible zipper in the back and there are only five pattern pieces. <laughs> 